Franklin County Commissioners meeting, July 10th, 2018. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the regular board meeting for the Franklin County Board of Commissioners. This is Tuesday, July 10th, 2018. All three commissioners, Commissioner Cook, Commissioner Miller, and Commissioner Peck himself, are here today along with County Administrator Mr. Johnson. And uh, first order of business is uh, called to order, so we are officially in order. And uh, if you care, please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Okay, uh, we have minutes on the agenda for June 19, 2018. Are there any comments, corrections, or concerns from any member of the board? Hearing mm -hmm. none, as written. Okay, hearing none, they'll stand as approved. Thank you. Um, next item is preliminary approval of uh, SUV 2018-01 Rancho Bonita. I understand that uh, the Stickney is going to walk us through this. <coughs> Good morning, Just morning. for the benefit of the board and the audience, are the applicants here today? Right. Wonderful. Thanks for being here. If you have any questions, we'll figure out a time when we can get you involved. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, this morning, you have before you preliminary plot approval. This is file SUV 2018-01, known as Rancho Bonita. This is a application to subdivide about 10 acres into seven single-family residential lots. Um, they're all 44,000 square feet or more in size. Um, the land is owned rural residential one, or R1. So there's, they're meeting that uh, minimum one acre lot size requirement. This property is located north of Roberta Road and east of Road 48. It's in the area um, known as Clark Edition, and the address is 4616 Ivy Road. We um, issued a modified DNS. Um, the modification was issued on May 30th, 2018, and all public notification requirements of this plat application were fulfilled. And at a regularly scheduled Planning Commission meeting, the Planning Commission heard and considered testimony in an open record public hearing. Uh, this is a quasi-judicial um, matter. And um, following the hearing, the parties of record were notified of the Planning Commission's recommendation and the process for appeals, and no appeals were filed, so it's here before you today. Um, the Planning Commission did vote to recommend um, forward a positive recommendation to you um, for this preliminary plot approval based on six findings of fact and seven conditions of approval. Um, we do have a few changes that I'll go over this morning. This was um, coordinated broadly among all of the agencies and um, in your packet you also received some of the correspondence that took place um, among City of Pasco and School District and so forth um, as a part of uh, working through this process. So with that, um, most of the findings of fact and uh, conditions of approval are as expected. There's a few things I wanted to highlight. Um, one is that this uh, proposal does comply with the county's comprehensive plan. Um, the comprehensive plan designation for the property is rural residential, so subdivision um, for residential uses is compliant. Um, we've looked at this for um, health, water supplies, all of the different um, utility and infrastructure requirements. Um, the, I have one change to findings of Act 1i. There was a typo. Um, it should say irrigation by lawn or non-commercial garden uh, is permit exempt. So we will change the, the typo there so that it reads lawn instead of the word law. My spell checker did not catch that, so I apologize. And so, Nicole, this might be a good time just to insert a preliminary question. Um, under the state's exempt law, uh, for exempt wells, irrigation of a lawn, if I recall, is up to a half acre. That's correct. And these are 44,000, so these are more than an acre. Obviously, part of the footprint is taking up with 
driveways and buildings, but but everybody understands that the, the exempt well lawn portion is a half acre limit. Yes, okay, yes, great. that is the limitation. Um, let's see. Uh, there weren't any other uh, changes or anything to really call out in terms of the um, findings of fact. Um, those are fairly self-explanatory. Under conditions of approval, I do have a few things I wanted to call out. Um, one is that I have a new version here removing item 1E under conditions of approval. Um, that was uh, kind of repetitive with a condition that was um, stated lower, so we're proposing just to strike 1E entirely. Um, and we coordinated that with Public Works. And then um, under item 7B, which is items from the Planning and Building Department, the first bullet is uh, addressing irrigation requirements. And uh, we had said all lots within this development shall at all times have an outside irrigation source, and we proposed just to change it, to remove the word outside. So it'll just read all lots within this development shall at all times have an irrigation source provided to them. And again, it repeats the limitation irrigation from permit except wells is limited to half acre or less for each lot. And where is that? Uh paragraph you were just referencing? 7B under conditions of approval. 7B, okay. Yes, and that's the first bullet. And we just think that way if it's put on the plat, folks will of course be alerted that they are limited to that half acre irrigation. Right, um, yeah. And the, I had raised to uh, Keith uh, just a question that it, somewhere in here, I think it was in 7B, <clears throat> it uh, in the wording, it seemed to come across that you wouldn't be able, if sometime in the future you had city water and you wanted to use that in part for irrigation, it would preclude doing that because it was on the plat and said it was limiting more than I thought it needed to be. Yes. So that's correct. It, yes. Okay. Yes, thanks. Sir. Yeah, we just don't want to create conditions for today that are a problem for in the future and leave as much flexibility as possible. Can't do it now. Um, okay. One other point of clarification that I wanted to provide about um, there's a there's a note on here about the minimum um, size required for health district purposes. Um, it's under 2A, and they are talking about how there needs to be a minimum gross land area of half an acre. Um, that is less than the minimum lot size required per zoning. Um, but that is their requirement. So, in fact, this proposal exceeds that requirement. That requirement, people will sometimes see it different from one uh, project to another. The requirement for the minimum land area for health district purposes is based on the water source and soil height. So that can really vary. There's no um, rule of thumb on that. But so, it defers to their rules. Yeah, let's, let's take a moment to <coughs> look at that. In general, uh, Health department looks for for well and septic is looking for an acre or a half total gross land area. That depends on soil type and if it okay. is and served by a private well. And I heard you say that the first time. Yeah. I was looking to see if you're going to give the same answer because are either of you aware that the one acre is standard that we've historically used for the health department was variable based on soil? No. I've, I've been 10 years, I've never heard of that. So thanks for educating us. Yeah. And that's something outside the meeting we can circle back and get more detail on. Yeah. It, it makes sense. If 90% if, if of your acre is basalt, it's not going to perk real well. But I wasn't aware that you could go on the smaller side if you had adequate soils. Now, is any of that factored by the fact that it looks like this was on a community well as opposed to individual wells per lot? Correct. Yes, they did factor that so in. So factored in as well. And I but did verify this yesterday. So I went on um, their website, and they have their um, health department rules. Well, and I, I'm not questioning you. I'm, yeah, there's I'm, a table in it. It just shows exactly how they That's why we it. pay you. Well, probably not as much as your work, but that's why we pay you. It's the educators. <laughs> So I think that's good. That's, it's, it's not very often that in 10 years of doing this you hear something that significant that we've never heard before. Gotcha. So that's good. Okay. Appreciate that. All right. What else do we have? 
I think I've pretty much scrubbed down all of the key points I wanted to bring up. Um, I think it is worth mentioning that the city of Pasco had submitted correspondence. There was a number of um, requirements that they wanted to be implemented on the plat. I responded to them that I did not think that any of those should be applied based on the vesting rules in the state of Washington. This land is not within city limits, and it's also not within our urban growth area. So I found that their comments were pretty out of bounds, um, and I responded as such. And they, Thanks, but. Okay. Yeah. And they, and literally. Huh? They still yeah. wanted to, us to provide that. So it's part of your record, but I'll repeat what I said to the Planning Commission. Looking at um, the state laws regarding vesting, um, I don't believe that you should consider any of their recommendations yeah. in regards to this particular project. Um, hmm. None of their recommendations are included in this package? No. Okay. Did you get the sense, I don't want to go too deep here, but did you get the sense that any of those were of a, uh, a precedence nature, an attempt to set a precedent for perhaps other properties in the vicinity? I don't know. Okay. Hard, okay. To, hard to read your mind, I know. I just mm -hmm. wanted to know if that instinct might have occurred. Okay. Anything else for us? That is all I have. I'm okay. subject to your questions. Thank you. And this is not, uh, not advertised as a hearing today. It's just a preliminary approval. So anything uh, from the board, comments or questions for staff? So some of those things Pascal was talking about is when was SEPA with the um, school impact fee? Yeah, so actually that has been addressed through the SEPA process. The um, school district originally had submitted an appeal on our SEPA determination of non-significance. Um, we let the applicant know about that. They worked out um, through private discussions a mitigation agreement, and subsequently the school district removed their appeal, and we issued a um, modified DNS that says that you know they've made agreement because they are in that service area of the school district to, so, so to they, do their own mitigation. But that's not part of our um, uh, conditions of approval for the past. That's in a SEPA. That's under SEPA. And they negotiated an agreement. They did it on their and own. they've been doing that for a while. Yes. yes. Well, that's kind of a new thing. But new thing? That's kind of. what's going to happen, yeah. and the county is not involved with any collection of those fees or confirmation that those fees are being paid. I think it's the first time they've actually formally yeah. challenged a SEPA. Historically, they've identified the developer and gone to them and said, if you will pay us, we won't challenge, which I'll say it again. I've said it publicly many times. It's, if it's not extortion, at least feels like it. And uh, so anyway, no said on that. In terms of the comments from the city of Pasco, they did um, suggest that their impact fees be assessed on this project and things like that. But yet again, this is not this project is vested upon the day that it was determined complete as a file. And um, even though the city um, may wish to include that in their urban growth area boundary, that is not that has not been done. And so, under the vesting rules. Um, well, help should not help me understand how vesting even plays into this, because even if they came in and applied today and didn't get vested for another week, it's still outside the UGA. It's That's still not inside the city limits, and it's still not relevant. That's correct. Okay. Well, we're always uh, willing to hear from our friends at the city. We don't always have to agree. Other questions from the board? Did I not read that... that um, the school district filed that appeal just so it was in a time frame, so it wasn't it wasn't necessarily uh, uh, you know they, they did it to stay in the in the parameters of the of the uh, time frame. Yeah, I, I I would speculate that if they had sat down a meeting beforehand, it was just days apart. They probably yeah. wouldn't have filed the appeal, but they right. did that to reserve their rights on it. And then um, maybe a week later, I got confirmation, written confirmation, that they wanted to withdraw yeah. their appeal. And that's kind of what I read mm -hmm. into it. Yeah, so it's kind of this order of events, and it all played out. Yeah. yeah. It sounded like everybody used the lawful process, and we got to a conclusion. That's, that's what matters. Yeah. Okay, any other comments from the board before I offer an opportunity for the applicant? I have nothing else at this point. Okay. 
you're, you're, it's not necessarily part of our process, but you're here, and you're certainly oh. welcome to, to share your thoughts or ask questions. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Enrique Salas. I'm a client uh, uh, resident on the 4669 Road. What's so are, are you the actually the applicant for yes. the... Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. My daughter is, she's the owner. Okay. Uh, one of the, the, the questions that I always had that never solved or... I bought the property with water rights, all 10 acres, um, with water rights certificate. We have our own well. And so I'm kind of concerned that we mentioned that each lot has the right to irrigate half an acre. Is that still, even though we have the water rights certificate? So I wasn't aware that you have a water rights certificate. The half acre is a limitation for exempt wells under the state's five types of exempt okay. wells. Yeah. And so if you've got a separate water right yes. and you're using a community well, my understanding is, and I'm, I'm not the expert, Nicole probably knows a lot more about it than I do, but if you've got a community well and you've got a water right, then what you can do with that water is stipulated in your water right and water rights can be granted for different purposes. It's not a universal thing where if you have a right, you can use it for whatever you want. How am I doing? Yes, and um, your application did not um, address any of that, and you had sent me an email, and I wrote you back saying that I didn't have any evidence of a certificated water right. So, it, I mean, certainly these, uh, these uh, provisions will apply to your plot, but if you have something that kind of supersedes it with your own certificated water right, that's yeah, just fine. Nothing will be in conflict. Okay, because we have a, um, we pay for, for irrigation, uh, you know, mm -hmm. from the plot addition uh, water supply, but we, we never use it. We always use our, 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 our own pump. Sounds like you have multiple sources of water. You have the opportunity right. for an exempt well under the state law. Mm -hmm. You have irrigation from the Clark Addition Association, plus it sounds like you have a certificate of water right. right. I, I would encourage you to maybe uh, invest just a little bit of time and money in, in uh, meeting with a, a water rights attorney. There are several in town that are, are really good, mm -hmm. and let them give you some advice. But as Ms. Stickney pointed out, this, uh, this approval, approval that's being requested here is really based on exempt wells, which is the least beneficial to you. If you've got other irrigation sources and a water right on top of it, I see that as additional benefit to you. I don't see it conflicting here. Yeah, because if we should divide it, we want the other lots to have the same right that, that we have. Because everything has already and, sprinklers and, and everything. Yeah, and I don't everything. know if, if your water right would allow you to do that or not. That's why I'm okay. encouraging right. you to seek some sure. legal counsel from somebody who's competent in that area. Okay, I just want to add that concern. Thank you. Okay, great, thanks. <clears throat> All right. Any other questions? Nothing for me. Okay. Sounds good. Anybody inclined to move for approval, disapproval, reconsideration? What's, what's your pleasure? Can you get the uh, copy there? Sure. Yeah, look at it. Well, I will move for the uh, preliminary approval. That should be 2018-1 for Rancho Bonita. Second. Okay, the motion is second for approval. That should be 2018-01 entitled Rancho Bonita. The resolution is 2018-214. Any other comments, questions, concerns from anybody? Okay, well... In that case, all in favor, please say aye. All right. All right. Okay. So it's unanimous. It's approved. Nicole, thanks for your help. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you being in the county and developing and building houses. We need them. Okay. Thank you. Is this a uh, correct copy? That's correct. This is this is not. Okay, so we'll go ahead and sign this copy. I marked the typos that will be corrected. Okay. Okay. So you're certainly welcome to stay for the whole meeting.
but don't feel like you have to either. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Copies of the same one. Is that right? Two copies of the same. Yeah. Maybe you could just, while we move on, you could just check that package and make sure that we've got the right ones that you need in there. Okay, next item of business is a request for a deviation from Franklin County design standards for construction of roads and bridges. And Matt, I understand you're going to present this one for us. Create a yard sale on the floor here. <laughs> yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning, Commissioner Miller, Commissioner Cook. <clears throat> that should have a directory uh, directory set up for it. Um, yeah, uh, the Board of Commissioners received a letter dated May 29, 2018 from Sally Carpenter requesting the deviation, as mentioned by um, Chairman Pack, um, at the request of the uh, County Administrator, I went ahead and did the research and had the discussion with both of the landowner and Fire District 3 and then prepared the Rita has as well as a uh, recommendation. Um, kind of going through this, the, getting into the specifics of the request, um, they, the Mrs. Car Ms. Carpenter's acquired a parcel, which is parcel number 12619416, which has access to Birch Road to the north of said parcel. I'll just exhibit one. I just prepared a couple quick exhibits here just to kind of give everybody a lay of the land. So as you see there, what is signified as Camas Road is the access, and you can see the parcel I have highlighted in red. So they have access off of Birch Road currently, um, and that is based on three separate easements that have been granted to this parcel. The first one grants the owners a 10-foot ingress, egress easement. Um, if you can pull up the second one. Just wanted that one to kind of give everybody a lay of the land. Yeah, that's actually really helpful, Matt. I appreciate that kind of get us in the right part of the county. We all know where Birch is, but it's a long road. <laughs> yeah. What I did here is I kind of highlighted the three areas. So the that first stretch there is a 10-foot ingress egress easement. And although I, I apologize for not providing this, I did have it in the information there that that's approximately um, um, 2,600, you know, 2,668 feet. Then they have a section there of a 20-foot easement. That's an ingress-egress easement. And then the second uh, or the third leg there is a 30-foot access easement that was granted as part of a short plat process. Um, the county requirements require um, for access because of the amount of parcels that could that could be built upon that this would be a a private access road, which would require a road to be constructed um, to a 20-foot wide standard. Um, you can see the uh, complexities of that when you only have a 20-foot or a 10-foot ingress egress easement. And so based on that information, and I do want to point out that i um, talking to Ms. Carpenter as well as in the letter that she wrote to the board, um, and of course I was able to confirm that, that she did talk to the neighbors about acquiring additional um, easements to be able to meet the county standard. 
um, and she was denied. And of course, um, we did take some pictures of of the existing roadways out there. And the reason why we believe is those are well established um, orchards out there, and of course, a well established circle. So we understand why the. Uh, Can I just slide a question here? Yeah. You mentioned that it could be uh, that we would ask for that to be a county road standard of 20, 20 feet wide based on number of homes, and we can come back to numbers later. Yes. But there are other standards as well, are there not, for ingress and egress of emergency response vehicles? And if so, what is that standard? The ones I'm citing you are those specific standards, yes. Okay, because you, you said you referenced 20 foot as a county road width, but I think what you really meant was minimum 20 feet for the ingress and egress of emergency response emergency vehicles. Emergency response vehicles. Okay, so they just happen to be the same width. Yes. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, we can go to the... The pictures. Um. So back to my point, whether they're building one home in there or ten homes, assuming they had the space, um, it still doesn't change that emergency ingress egress. Um, if it's if it's supplying the one home, then it's what they consider to be a private, private access, lane. A, a lane, right. and that standard um, twelve with twelve with, with twenty foot. Yeah, with four foot on each side. Yeah. Again, for emergency and egress. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. And the 12 is the road bed? Correct. Okay. And the extra four, I'm assuming, is so that one vehicle can pull over while another emergency vehicle can pass? That is correct. Okay. And typically that, that road bed is a four inch gravel. Does it need to be a full width gravel or just the 12 foot road bed? Um, in you a, have a 12 foot road bed and a four foot swale on the other side? Excess lane. It's 12 foot gravel with an access road for fire for emergency vehicles. It's 20 foot. Gravel. Okay. And so if you've got a 12 foot lane, what do you have to have for the four feet on either side? It has to be unobstructed. Unobstructed. So just clear. Clear. So it could be soft soil. It could be any number of things. Yeah. Typically, we include in our design standards include that as part of the bed. So it's, it's actually well compacted. Um, All right, so it's, so it's yeah. not just unobstructed. Yeah. It's passable road bed, but it doesn't necessarily have to be gravel. Right. Okay. It, it's important because, obviously, if you don't have an easement, you can't make those kinds of improvements to it. And if, if all you needed to do was have four feet and it didn't have to be altered in any way, the adjacent landowners might be more willing to grant an easement like that. But if you have to actually go in and compact the road bed, then that's different. That's why I asked. Yes. Okay, thank you. And what we try to illustrate here, and one of the things that we did is um, this is our back is, um, as we're facing south, our back is at Birch Road. Um, and we're kind of shooting a picture of the existing road that's down there. The one thing I do want to point out is that I did take measurements throughout the uh, length of this. This is the section where, they're, where they have a, currently a 10 foot ingress egress easement. And I did want to just took measurements. There, the unobstruct they do have a they do have the 20 foot of unobstructed mm -hmm. in this area, based on the existing facilities that are out there, whether it be the, the vineyards and orchards or even the post and fence on the on the other side of the road. Um, Yet to be accepted and permitted for a home. There's got to be a legal right to the unobstructed land, correct? Because there's nothing that precludes an adjacent landowner from putting something in that. That's that's the, that's the issue. That's the issue. Sure. Okay. There's no guarantee that uh, that certainly these they couldn't be expanded. On Somebody the puts a concrete weir box in somewhere. It's, yes. it's their land. It's their right. Correct. Okay. So just kind of quickly going down through here, and you can see that it, even at this area, there would be some, some significant work that would have to occur um, to even meet the current standards as far as uh, the amount of crushed surfacing or gravel that would have to be put down. And you know there are design standards. There is there is profiles and there is a, a horizontal alignment as well that has to be considered and you can see that based on this there um, 
there are portions that, uh, that the county engineer Craig and myself noticed that the existing road, which is currently used, being used by the adjacent landowners, isn't always in, inside the existing easements. And as you, as we move south, you can see where it kind of went around that land mass there. And so, and then this is as we get past that land mass, and really are getting um, next to the the first structure that's there. Um, you can see that there's definitely a lot of work, but we understand and, and talking with uh, with the landowner, they understand that all of this would have to be built to these standards. Um, and this is a section here where there is the 20 foot, and so they absolutely could construct everything they needed to within the existing easement. Um, the, the tree line there is the... Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's no concerns about the 20 and 30. Yeah. It's really all the, the 10, the yeah. half mile of 10. And we did we did want to point out, as we are kind of just driving down through it, because um, we wanted to look at the full length, and this is coming up there. The, we do have two power poles here. Um, you see the fence line that is on the that's on the easterly line of the of the easement. The easement lies westerly of that fence. As I'm facing south, there's two power poles there. There is a 20 foot clearance between those two power poles, but they do have a guy anchor that comes down there, and certainly there isn't the uh, the minimum height criteria in that area. And so those are things that um, we just are noting would have to be. Are there multiple out. easements overlaying? I mean, it's, there's a road easement, but is there also a utility easement overlaying that? Um, I mean, how do you how do you run a guy wire across somebody's road without no, a utility they, easement? No, they do the they do have a utility easement okay. for the, those power poles and any adjustments to that. I just as a just a matter of record, those are things that would have to be. Do we, I understand. Good here. good point. Um, does that utility easement run all the way from Birch all the way south? This this particular line, they do have. This is actually the beginning of a line that runs south. It comes from the west and runs to the east here. And so then, the answer yeah. is no. No. Okay. There is no power. There, yeah, the power lines really start here and run south. So the easement starts at the north end of the 20 foot, the north end of the 30 foot, or somewhere else. This would be at the uh, the north end of the 30 foot. Okay. All right. Thanks. Do you know how wide that utility easement is? I believe when I looked at it, I, I can get the information back up to the board. I, I, I just thought if, if you knew it would be interesting, but I don't yeah. have to have it. Okay. And I do want to, as I went through this, like I said, I had discussions with the landowner, had discussions with um, with Fire District 3, as noted in my read aheads, with uh, Captain Langston. I also requested that um, he give me that information in writing. Um, I am making a recommendation based on the information I received from from them. Um, our, our standards do require that uh, any deviations first go to the fire marshal or the or the fire district. Mm -hmm. um, so did you say Captain Langston? Yeah, Captain yeah. Langston. Who is, Jason, Jason who is Langston. That? He's with fire district number three. He's the captain there. Okay. I recognize the name. I just don't think yeah. I've ever met him. Okay. And uh, I did include the, the email correspondence. Based on all of this, um, if you notice when I wrote the uh, deviation request, because there is 20 feet and then they do have 30 feet, I felt like we did not need to include those in the deviation request, so I only wrote the deviation as a the draft resolution for, for the, the for the ten foot for section. The 10 section. Okay. I think that makes sense. Yeah. And so with that I'll just have any questions of the landowner are here today if the board has any specific questions you want. Okay. I think we probably need to have some discussion before we go to that. Uh, is on the 10 foot section only. Okay, I've, I've got several lines of inquiry I think we need to talk about, but I'm going to go to the board first. Is there anything that 
the commissioners would like to discuss at this point? Usually, well, I'd like to hear your questions because it may cover it. Start with, I guess, on my side of it, after 20 plus years I was in the fire service actually having a code inspecting uh, <coughs> license. Uh, in our Franklin County and in the, the International Fire IFC, they call it International Fire Code, um, it, it stated it shall be 20 foot. It's not maybe or could be, and, and it's, it doesn't uh, give any options for deviation. So I, for one, cannot, cannot support this 10 foot. You say I've, uh, I've been in Franklin County Fire District One for over 20 years, and I understand the, the uh, ingress and egress, and, and uh, I cannot support the deviation. <coughs> okay, let me ask one. That it. Okay. Um, we saw a picture of the little road there. Is there going to be any base built or anything else at this point? Of the 10 foot? Yes, I mean, the, the, yeah. recommend, the recommendation does consist of the fact that everything out that the road actually be built to the, the current standards, which would require yes. the. Yeah, but the yeah, it's not just a recommendation, that's a requirement. That's a requirement. That's a requirement. Okay, so but the <coughs> problem is it's going to continue to be 10 foot, just as Commissioner Cook said. Yeah, you know, I, and I wanted to come as prepared as I could. Um, and I did do some research on that. Um, and it is true, a lot of other agencies, of course, take that 20 foot. And depending on how many lots it's serving, certainly that width expands. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I did notice as ever Excuse, excuse me, Matt. It's, it's an important point you just sort of touched on. I want to make sure that everybody hears it. <coughs> Depending on the number of lots yes. you served, you didn't say homes, you said lots. And those can be different things, but let's assume you meant both, homes yes. and lots. If you have more, the road requirement can be made bigger. Correct. As Commissioner Cook pointed out, the IFC fire code says it shall be 20 feet minimum. Yeah, there is. So, so what I want to get to is wherever you're going with your line of reasoning, if there's anything in there that gives authority for making it less than 20, mm -hmm. then we're interested in knowing what it is and what criteria are required for that approval. Yeah, the, I know you've thought about this. The key word is unobstructed. Okay. Yeah, in the and, and legal easement. Yeah, I, that's, I think, the issue here. The real issue is not enough easement to to, well, that's right. To, and, to ensure that there will always be a 24 and, and, and always be is the key phrase because the requirement is not that it's unobstructed at the day of permitting, it's that it remain unobstructed. Correct. So I'll, I'll just sort of jump ahead and suggest that what, what I think I see coming here is that we've got landowners on both sides who apparently are not, for whatever reason, uh, interested in granting additional space for an easement. If they knew that all that would be required in that easement is for it to remain clear and not that there would be any road development there, that might be more attractive to them. We can hear from the applicants uh, in a few minutes. Uh, I don't know what discussions have gone on between those landowners. Uh, I can imagine if I were an adjacent landowner and I thought someone was actually going to do development on my property, I might not be keen on giving them an easement, but if I knew that all I had to do was for that four foot to be clear, and in return I'd be allowed to use that road that my neighbors in the end paid to improve, and if I knew that that was going to uh, enhance the availability of emergency services in, in my area, then, then as an adjacent landowner I might be more inclined to see where I'm going. Yes, I agree. Yes. Okay. Right. So, um, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, that that's really to me is the real issue is being able to ensure a 20-foot unobstructed. Um, 
And so what I always talk about with, in this case, I just want to make, you made a great point. Uh, really what I'm talking about is unobstructed with the, the width of pavement or gravel within that really is, um, sure. really is a, across the board when you look at it. And the IFC doesn't really call specifically what that surface needs to look like. Um, but certainly the 20 foot un unobstructed is in the IFC. We've adopted the IFC. Um, and if they had 20 foot and the question was a roadway that it was somewhat less than 20 constructed, then that might be a, a much easier topic to discuss. Matt, do you know if there are other potential ingress egress routes and whether or not efforts have been made to secure easements elsewhere? Well, I know that 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 is where we're at now. We well, no, no. I'm yeah. asking, do you know if there's been any effort in that connection? I'm going to ask the applicants in a minute anyway. I'm just asking if you know. Of other lot owners, security, no. or that? No. no. We're, we're talking about no. a particular route that goes south no. off of Birch. Are there other ways into this property, assuming that easements were available from other, you know, can you come in from the south or the west or the east? Are there other other options? We, we looked at the some possible other options. Because part of what we have yes. to weigh here is, you know, does, does the applicant have other opportunities to comply with the code and still accomplish access to the property. And if, if the answer is no, this, this is really the only route, then commissioners have some latitude to factor that in as much or as little as they think is appropriate. But there's no other avenue that you're aware of. There's no other existing easements and the designated Craig route looking around and trying to see if there's other ways to come in. There's other obstructions that create. Which is really doesn't, this appears to be yeah. the best and easiest. Right. Well, listen, if, if the board would allow me some latitude, I'd, I'd like to have a brief discussion here, you know, in the meeting with the applicants <clears throat> on the idea that uh, rather than uh, disapproving this, maybe tabling it, offering them an opportunity to go meet with those landowners and explain that um, you need a 12-foot gravel road and four foot of clear on either side, but that they wouldn't actually be using that land, they just need to keep it clear, because it appears to be clear anyway, and that combined with the benefits to the adjacent landowners of having emergency vehicle access uh, and also having beneficial use of that road that someone else is going to maintain for them. Maybe they can come to terms and we can avoid. Well, it's entirely up to them. They of course. Work work and right. I'm just suggesting. At today's standards, and actually talking to uh, Franklin County Fire District 3 Chief Mike Harris yesterday, he totally agrees with me. Yeah. He doesn't agree with this captain. Yeah. Well, our options, of course, are that, that we can simply say it, it, the request doesn't meet the code and, and it's a life safety issue and so we're, we're just in a position where we have to say, sorry, I can't do it. The other option would be to say yes, and I, I don't sense that there's enough votes on the board at this point to do that. I'm not trying to encourage anybody one way or the other. Um, and then I'm just thinking that there's this middle ground <clears throat> where um, if the adjacent landowners know that uh, that the easement would be undeveloped, it would just simply have to remain clear that that, that might be uh, you know, a compromise that can be worked out. But I understand, Commissioner Cook, what you're saying is we're in the same position if we were to vote no, uh, they could still go they have that the option. Though, <laughs> right. Um, if uh, we table it and they go talk to the landowners and we learn new information and they come back, it's not likely that that would persuade us to yes, but it keeps the door open in case new information comes up. That's where I was going. I would agree to go ahead and table and let them investigate this and bring back some information. I think working and collaborating is the way to do this, um, and maybe we can uh, come to a conclusion you know, in time on what we can do here. Matt, are I guess my only, you know, with the applicants, my only concern is that you're one of how many different parcels do we have in the county that mm -hmm. if we give a deviation on this, we're going to have a flood of people. And, you know, I just don't want to start that 
you know, I don't know how that ever got uh, allowed to have a building permit back where that house is now. But it sounds like it was 30 years ago. Well, and that's why I asked about other acts, routes in and out. I was assuming that there must have been something somewhere. You know, they just they just built it. Okay, now. Yeah. These easements were established in the in the 90s. And, okay. You know, yeah, so I'm not, I guess what you're trying to do, I just, safety. I, I got to be able to stay with the code. Um, but like uh, Commissioner Peck says, if you can spend some time with the mm -hmm. owner and, and discuss it, and, uh, uh, you know, you're going to have to upgrade that road, and that may be enough to uh, persuade them to allow you to upgrade that road and get that extra footage. Yeah, it, it, I'm hopeful that they're not aware that the easement space you're requesting wouldn't necessarily be developed. It just needs to be left clear. Mm -hmm. And if you could emphasize to them the benefits to them, if their mm -hmm. land should catch fire, it's access for a fire response. And if they need law enforcement, it's access for that. And, and uh, probably even has some indirect value improvement for their property too plus they get what's called the beneficial use of, of the road that you're paying to maintain yeah. i really think that's the approach i would take it's pretty clear uh, commissioner cook has articulated that um you know it's, it says shall and, and he's not comfortable with the variance i'm i would probably be uh, uh I mean, I'd, I'd be reluctant to vote yes, too, because of the precedent issue. I can think offhand of several places where we've had people who have this kind of a situation who very much would love to have a 10-foot access. And it's not so much getting a, an ambulance or a fire truck in. It's if you've got one trying to get out one trying to get in, and now you can't, and you've got your road blocked. If, if a fire truck breaks down, for example, and you've got people that you have to evacuate, in an ambulance and your only road out is blocked because it's not wide enough for two now you're risking people's lives and and that's why the code is written the way it is so i would uh in fact and i could even you know kind of uh, agree with if there was 30 or 40 foot of area that is is really narrow but 2600 feet mm -hmm. is a hell of a stretch yeah so that's a long route so um What's the preference of the board here? Are we inclined to think that tabling it is is uh, the right approach, or are we pretty pretty firm that we just can't see a path where we could approve this? And if that's the case, we ought to just own up to it and say, "Sorry, we can't approve it." Uh, that would be no, much rather just table it at this point yeah. with the applicants yeah. see what they can do, so exactly. they don't have to start all over again. Well, and I think you make a good point. Let me let me articulate another side of that thought, which is um, they wouldn't have to start all over again. But if, if we're pretty dead set that we just can't see a way to approve a ten foot, if we table it and you go talk to the adjacent landowners, our tabling it appears to be a door that's still open. If we deny it, you go to the land and say, mm -hmm. you're really our only remaining option because the county has denied it. So I guess I'm kind of thinking, what do you have a preference? Would, would you uh, prefer to go to the adjacent landowners and say, this, this, you're really our last option, the county has said they can't do it? Or would you like us to table it and wait till you come back? I feel like doing that would be um, more effective with the landowners. Okay. Yeah. I think okay. the one is a big farm, it's a big farm corporation. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, why don't you just come oh, yeah, up the mic if you would? Just, <laughs> just because it is a public meeting yeah. and it's public uh, The one landowner with the veneers is a large far, farm corporation. And so I think that if they just see that they have to leave the four feet, you know, unobstructed, mm -hmm. I think that makes it pretty easy for them. And then the other landowners is a small farm that they don't want to give up their farmland, which I completely understand. And sure. if they just say, okay, we just have to leave this unobstructed. unobstructed, I think it would be much easier for them to agree to it than us to say, please, <laughs> the county say no, we yeah, need more width. And, so. and you do have a little bit of a carrot there too, because you're going to have to upgrade that full length of road to right. standard so yes 
So you'll be fixing your farm road at the same time. Right. So right. I just, just want to kind of be clear. You know, the one option is where we say, sorry, we can't do it, and we deny it. And so you're going and talking to them saying the county has denied it because of the code, and you, friendly neighbors, landowners, are really our only option. Uh, the other is that we table it and we're telling them that we're still hopeful that the county will let us build it on the 10 feet, but if you give us the extra four for clear zone. So it's just a matter of how you want to approach your neighbor. Well, I would request that you table it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, would uh, make that motion to move to Yeah, I was just tables. thinking about how much time, because I kind of like to table it to a, a time certain. Okay. Um, how and much? You got some of you got a corporation you have to deal with, so I wouldn't mm -hmm. tie them too mm -hmm. tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, why, don't we, uh, why don't we do it this way? This is the uh, 10th of July, so we got the 17th, the 24th, the 31st is the meeting date, is it? Okay, so why don't we uh, table it uh, until July 31st or uh, uh, or sooner if uh, requested by the applicant through Public Works. That gives us a, a definite date and also gives yeah. us some flexibility. And I would also uh, offer that I'm sure that Mr. Mahoney would be uh, happy if the adjacent landowners had questions about the rules uh, and what actually they're being asked to do. If they want to hear that from the county as opposed from you, I'm sure he'd be happy to help. Okay. He's a very helpful guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if it places the board, yeah, I'll continue my discussions with the, with the landowners and, and, okay. and help them along the way. Yeah. And, and I'll just close with this thought. You've got three commissioners up here who all, I, I believe, are of the mindset that our job is to be uh, advocates for citizens and that we should facilitate, not regulate. And it, mm -hmm. it kind of hits us hard when there's something that we'd like to do, but the rules just say don't do it, fire safety, life safety. So so we appreciate you working with us. And, uh, so if we can get a motion to formalize table to the 31st or a date sooner. I guess I thought I did. It did kind of get a motion. So yeah, I just <laughs> yep. wanted to give you that opportunity. Yep. It kind of needs a second or a, a second. Yeah. Okay, there's, there's a second. second. Yep. All right, so we have a motion and a second for tabling until July 31st or a date sooner if requested by the applicant. And this is on the request for deviation to the Franklin County Design Standards for Construction of Roads and Bridges. All in favor, please say aye. 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 So there, that's official. Um, July 31st, uh, if that needs to extend, I'm sure we can, mm -hmm. but we kind of like to set a marker out there. If you want to do it sooner, get with that. Okay. All right. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, uh, initiating County Roads Project 623-2018, hard surfacing of miscellaneous rural roads. Mr. Mahoney again. Um, actually, I feel I've probably talked enough before, so I'm going to turn this over to the county engineer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I'll have all the spot. Well, if it pleases the board, we've um, brought CRP 223 in front of you uh, for approval. Uh, we created a matrix several years ago with uh, <coughs> high maintenance gravel roads and uh, we feel that we've kind of reached a point where we can do a little bit about that. So um, uh, some background, the, the 2017 countywide spring runoff emergency event caused millions of dollars in damages and Closed off uh, major and minor artillery roads to left the county residents detouring through back uh, country gravel roads. Uh, the Public Works Department has identified three emergency detour routes that would be in the best interest of the county to bring up to all other routes, and that would be Mound Road, Dayton Road, and Iowa. Uh, the, and I don't know, I hopefully it got to the board um, that the, the total estimated cost. Uh, is, is actually about 777400 uh, That was a late change last night. We found a, uh, an error in one of our estimates. And it's quite a difference from 1.4. Yeah, it made me happy. <laughs> so 
at the same time that you updated those numbers, you added the section of Dayton from Sagemore to Cedar? I believe that's already paid. <coughs> is it? Or am I mis... Is Patch working there, so I might be recalling. So if it's not, you can add that in. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Yes. That was easy. <laughs> Try to play nice. Yeah. All right. Well, I think it's... Uh, it's great. I think this is overdue, and the fact that you can tie it to the essential detour routes makes a lot of sense. But I just would like to add real quick, and I don't want to take any more of the board's time, is the, the priority array that Craig is talking about, something that, of course, we've been very passionate about, and we've, that passion has been instilled in us by this board. I'm really uh, spending some time with our gravel roads and really trying to evaluate which roads we can we can get hard surface. Which and and we're not done with that. We, we're not going. We just don't want you to think we're doing that in the vacuum. We want that to be something that we bring in front of the board and the board approves. So that gives us a good path forward, especially as we continue uh, the budget cycles from year to year to continue to be able to include some of these roads. The reason these roads have been identified was based on our experiences from the spring, the spring runoff and flooding that we had in 2017. These roads became primary detour routes and not not just that they were detour routes, but they also, I own, as everybody remembers, was a road that got flooded out as well and damaged. <coughs> because it was really the only detour route when we lost Glade, it was one that we had to get in right away and get repaired. So yeah, it wasn't just damaged, it was gone. It was gone. It was yeah, gone. Of it. It and was so, gone. so these were pretty easy selections for us based on experience, but I, we do want to just let you know that we do plan on bringing back um, a work product and, you know, our preference is that we have a workshop initially Great. and and kind of give us some good uh, input moving forward on what the board would like to see from us. But with that, I'll... I'll Oh, been a been a number of years since you've been able to upgrade some mm -hmm. uh, gravel to some uh, hard surface, and yet well, we did almost what thirty miles twelve years ago. Or? Yes, we. There's always been this thing about about funding, and the reality of it is, is if we do our job the right way, we do have fun, we do have funding available, money available, local monies to do this work to do some. To do some as we go, as we go, yeah. we can't do it all at once. It's right. going to be, uh, but certainly we can get the priorities for the county with the boards. Yeah. Uh, Appreciate uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. And Matt, I'll just, I'll just close this discussion with the thought that it is, uh, I'm sure, appreciated by the whole board that when you and Craig come in with these recommendations. <laughs> You're not just picking things randomly. You've got really sound logic behind them because there's a lot of folks with a lot of gravel roads who'd like to have those paved, and we have to be able to look them in the eye and say, no, here's the reason why these roads were selected. And I appreciate the fact that you you do that because that's, that's the right way to do it, and you've got criteria behind the decision. So good job. Thank you. Okay. All right. With that, we'll go ahead and move to... Uh, for resolution initiating CRP 623 18 hard surfacing of millennials rural access roads, down road, big road, and I own road project. And this is uh, 2018 to 16. This is uh, 16, right? 216. 2018 to 16. I second. Okay, motion is second for approval of uh, initiating county road project 623 2018. Mm -hmm. Via resolution 2018-216. Any other comments or questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 It's approved. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Johnson, we're uh, about 20 minutes late here. If you didn't, if you didn't have so many questions, so. next item, uh, commissioners, is a uh, 
sort of request for some guidance um, related to financing the uh, necessary or needed uh, upgrades and remodeling of the production center. Uh, you're all well aware of the fact that we signed uh, a settlement agreement obligating us as a county to make some significant change in the physical structure of the jail in the old portion of the jail, uh, as well as making sure that the jail staff can properly segregate and classify uh, inmates coming into the system. And um, over the course of a uh, number of months, uh, we found it very difficult to uh, come up with the financing that was proposed through a RFP process where we sought some engineering studies of uh, complete remodeling. Uh, the county just not, is not in a financial position to uh, take on that level of a project, and so we've been looking for some alternatives. Uh, I would credit primarily the, the jail commander and uh, his staff with doing some internal work to use existing resources uh, to essentially create a a model by which we hope to be able to move forward to meet the obligations of our settlement agreement. They have uh, uh, repainted and resurfaced and uh, put in new locks in one of the pods in the jail, uh, major improvement from where it was. The monitor for uh, the settlement agreement uh, has reviewed the progress we've made to date. I would suggest that they were happy with the progress in terms of the quality of the work that was done. And, uh, they are concerned with the rate at which we are uh, still behind schedule in terms of meeting our obligations. We do have a review in front of the judge scheduled in December, uh, in which we will have to then be accountable for the, the progress we have or have not made with respect to these modifications. And so uh, we recognize that uh, in spite of the best efforts of the sheriff's office and the jail staff to, uh, to make some of these changes and improvements now, uh, we have a need to, to really move forward these last few months of the year to be prepared for that uh, settlement conference or that uh, conference with the judge. Uh, having said all of that as, a, as kind of a backdrop, uh, we, we also recognize that in order to be able to fund <coughs> that needs to be done between now and December, uh, the real likelihood of uh, getting financial resources going to have to come from our reserve fund. We've estimated that uh, the minimum that we would need between now and the year is $350,000. Uh, that we do have that amount available in the reserve fund. There's approximately $1.8 million dollars in there now. We, we have obligated some of the reserve fund in a budget process that took place last fall for the upgraded the bike and uh, system that we're working with the tri cities region on, on upgrading that software. But uh, we still have a fairly healthy green from which we need to draw. Now, in order for us to be able to use money from the reserve fund that requires a budget action and so we would have to post a notification publicly and have a public hearing on a uh, amending the budget uh, and we would uh, anticipate that that would take a couple of weeks to do that. Uh, what I'm looking for today is uh, making sure that your questions have been answered in terms of understanding what we want to accomplish between now and the end of the year and uh, authorization to move forward with making that public announcement that we would ask for an additional $350,000 in reserve plans standing for completion of this work. Uh, just, I would also point out that we do have some contingency funds still in the current expense budget that have not been expended with over $200,000 remaining in that uh, line item. Um, but just as a matter of uh, financial caution, we do have some legal settlements and other things that you know, typically come up in the last six months of the year. I, I don't want us to spend too much of that without giving us a, an opportunity to uh, see. Yeah, I, I don't think that contingency is a place to look at at this point. And, but yeah, I would concur, but I want you to be aware that, yeah. uh, that that money is, is still there. 
but I do support uh, carrying on to a public hearing on, uh, on the proposed uh, construction. So, so I have two questions. First, just a, you said 1.8 is the balance we have now. Yes. Okay, good. And uh, the other one is all this is the old jail work? Uh, yes, this would be primarily the old intake area that uh, is being created for a female intake uh, solution as part of our settlement agreement. Uh, the old master control uh, unit has some uh, uh, information technology mm -hmm. that needs to be relocated. There's some welding and uh, remodeling of that that needs to take place. Some addi additional technology needs to be installed to, to make it functional. Uh, it's creating some storage and uh, space and uh, upgrading some, okay. some locks and doors. I just wanted to make sure that I was clear on those two questions, which weren't, which, you know, I'm pretty sure of, but it's just good to know. And I would agree with Commissioner Cook that we need, this is something we, can, we should do. So, start with the easy part. <clears throat> I, th I think uh, it's the right thing to do. I want to give a little bit of background on what some of my concerns are. One is we created this reserve fund because in the old days we never had a separate isolated reserve and we did that so that the money wouldn't get sucked into current expense and spent on other stuff. So that when we did have a real crisis, and I think this fiscally speaking and legally speaking mm -hmm. probably fits into that department. So I'm really reluctant to spend these funds, but this, I think, meets the threshold. Um, it's tough enough for us to make our budget each year. It's going to be even tougher to try and replenish and grow this reserve fund in the future. Um, we're already, percentage-wise, I think well below what our own fiscal policy says for our reserve fund, but conversely, not spending your reserve in a crisis because you haven't built it as big as you want it to be, it's really kind of silly. So I just wanted to get that out there. So I'll refer to it as a rainy day fund. <laughs> well, I think it's, it's raining. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other uh, point about contingency, uh, I agree with what's already been said. That's, that's not the place to pull this money. Um, and the last thought that I have is, how do we get at the 350,000 number? Uh, that was an estimate put together from uh, conversations that I had with the sheriff's office and, and Joe staff uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, based on the money that was spent in upgrading the, the project they had done, they estimated the cost of supplies. Okay, so if, if I were doing this, and I thought I needed 300, I'd ask for 350. Mm. If I thought I needed 350, I'd ask for four. <laughs> so, so I'm just making sure that we're asking for enough here so that we don't do this twice. Mm -hmm. So is 350 the number? Sheriff, you want to wait on this? You didn't expect that, did you? No, I respect So I, I think that. Probably the short of that answer is that's enough money to get us from one end of the jail, hopefully through to the middle part of the jail, and make it acceptable and within compliance. That doesn't, it won't, we'll be back again, I guess is what I'm saying. Well, I, 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 I get that. I don't want to open the budget formally twice in the remaining six months. If, uh, if yeah. the number is, if we, if we think the number is three and a quarter and we're saying three and a half, that's reasonable. If if we're trying to really cut a fine line saying we think we can squeak by with this, I would rather we authorize up to or something like that. I'm, I'm trying to create flexibility here. Um, you know, the first first order of business, the goal, the mission, however you want to say it, is is to get this thing in shape for the December visit, and we don't want to find ourselves in November saying we need this much more and then being delayed. Now we could. Pull a little extra from contingency at that point if we needed to. If it's there, if it's there, right? I'm just I'm trying to create flexibility 
and anticipate what might go sideways so that we make sure that we hit the target, so to speak? That's absolutely a reasonable question and the right question. Uh, we, we've built in a little factor. Okay. Not, uh, I, I can relook at the, the exact number. Um, I think they spent about twelve to 15000 on the first pod. Uh, we expect, uh, we estimated it those now, the remaining cost at, at twenty to twenty-five thousand. So there is a, a factor of error there, built in. There's some margin in yes. there for increases in so costs. So when we find I out that anticipated going beyond four hundred thousand. Okay. And, and maybe based on your point, I think that might be a, uh, a request. That we yeah, well, with respect to the reserve fund, whether it's 350 or 4, uh, the higher priority is to make sure that that we provide the resources to to get us to the visit. So, I think the uh, unknown as far as denomination numbers go is, is the actual, we're going to have to outsource the actual female intake area. It's going to have to come from the outside the construction of it and that stuff. And those numbers aren't hard and fast yet. And we didn't have to do that on the work that was just done. No. We're so doing we got, it all internally. We got a pretty big unknown there. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we have some reasonable estimates. Okay. Well, Keith, what would you what would you advise? Um, I, if, uh, if I had just consensus from the board today, we will go ahead and post a uh, public hearing and uh, have that public hearing at which time the board can make a decision on the final number. Resolution. Yeah. yeah. What's, the, what's the pleasure of the board? I'm, I support it. Also. Yeah, I support this. Okay. Good. Thank you. I think that's a good approach too. It gives us flexibility and a little bit more time to nail down those outside contract costs. Okay. Next item on our published agenda is public comments. Anybody from the public that wants to speak with the board? Um, I just uh, want to say up front, you're not required to give us your personal information, name, address, but you're certainly welcome to. I cannot help from doing it. I'm Johnny Cloud. Okay. we also like to know whether or not you reside in Franklin County. I do. Wonderful. And if I may approach for a second. Oh, sure. We're not a court. We're very yeah. informal. Well, I'll let you guys go. I didn't let, let's make it look very formal and make copies for you. Okay. But I want to be able to kind of see what I've been doing here in our county in the town of Pasco, in the town of Pasco, and I want to be able to let you guys know my direct concerns. You know, I was listening on the radio yesterday. Western Washington lost their funding for uh, Pioneer Center North for Western State Hospital. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you guys, first, I have autism, and I'm a man of total rehabilitation. What I'm sending around there is letters of recommendation from, my, from our city, our loving county and community. I know that you gentlemen are the men that I need to talk to in retrospect to the health, welfare, and safety. And that's with an inclusion because of Title II, Section 2 of the Human Rights Commission in and for the state of Washington that there must be reasonable accommodations made for the disabled. You know, Claude Oliver has got a very wonderful presentation here. What he has, I believe, myself, to be the solution for the mental health problems and to be able to help facilitate it where we have less people going into the jail or gym, where we're able to get people with mental health issues into the area where they need. The one thing I want to touch bases with in the Franklin County, we don't need a needle exchange. What that is, is called an a -boing. You know, when you hand an addict a needle, there ain't no way you can control that needle. I'm sure, I'm sure even Mr. Raymond will tell you that the needle will pass from one person to another and another before you know if there's a chain reaction in diseases. And all it's going to do is going to be an encumbrance of problems. You know, the best theory that a man can use for him to be able to get clean and sober, just like I did, it's a lot of hard work, rigorous honesty, 
Have that intuitive dashboard with God. Stuff that you'll learn in the crisis program that Claude Oliver is trying to present. I need you gentlemen, if I can, to please be able to be in touch with the County Commissioners. The time to enact upon the crisis center down here in Ainsworth is now. Claude has got the funding there and everything available. If we can, for our community, can we maybe be able to schedule a date where we could have something targeted out there so we can get, like, uh, Sean and the guys, uh, Jim Beaver, all on board, where we can go ahead and do a stereo diseases and be able to have a gavel in this law. We don't have a detox at this time. They're overflowed with the jails. There's people in jail that don't need to be there, that they need to be into a mental health facility. I believe that they have a structured 300 minute a day curriculum program for IEPs for each individual person. It takes a village to raise a child. Likewise, to be able to help a man through sobriety. But you know, it's a lot of hard work. But at the end, where you're at, when you get to be where I'm at, you don't have a fear anymore of drinking or drugging, but you do. You really, truly do develop a true passion for God in your sobriety. And part of my duties is to be able to tell you guys the type of messes that we run into in the county down here at Franklin that I see on a regular basis. I sweep the farmer's market. I'm, I'm the man that's down there and I do the cleanup and I volunteer my services. Why? Because I was born here. And I'm a man of rehabilitation. You guys know the very first commissioner that we had known the man was Jacob. And Jacob's ladder was not designed to ascend up, but it was designed for his appointed commissioners to be able to look out and see where the help is needed and be able to get their committees targeted out there to be able to facilitate and be able to help encompass the problems. Now, it's a bi-county assertion as a whole. Now remember, fellas, I have autism and took a lot of hard work for me to get where I'm at today. A lot of you may know me back from my drinking days and I wasn't such a pretty guy. And I really am not real pretty now, but spiritually, I'll know it's by our fruits. And I'm trying to be fruitful and to be able to help my community. Is there any way we can schedule something where we can have Claude come up with a formal presentation? Because he has the funds, we have the buildings, the old Osborne building, that's up and available too. What it takes is for us to be able to get together and be able to help guide these people through. And you know, the jail is like a dairy. In and out, in and out. And half the people that are going in there are MICA, mentally incapacitated and chemically affected. And you gentlemen, to the fine men that you are, have the opportunity to make a difference. In fact, you could even make it today. Thinking about what Westerners went through, you guys can make sure. I wouldn't want to have everything that you guys have on your plate because everything's going to be crashing in with the money. People want to reach out for money for the funds. That money is targeted here and now. We have it here and now. Claude found it. And it's necessary that you guys are able to do something. That's all I have today. You guys do a very fine job. And I'd really like to thank you for your service. <laughs> Can I see those for a second? Certainly. Is there any way to cancel this? Uh, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to get a copy. I, I know three of those people. So, um, a couple of quick comments. The, the board has uh, been presented with opportunities to fund a crisis response facility in the past by enabling the or enacting the one tenth of one cent mental health tax, which the board has the authority to do. Um, I'm not going to speak to the other commissioners. I'll just tell you twice since I've been a commissioner, I've made proposals to enact that, that sales tax. 
between the two counties is generate four to five million a year. It would fund the construction and the staffing of a full-time crisis response facility. So you and I are already on the same page in terms of, of uh, resource. Um, I'll also say that since that time, a lot has changed. The state has gone with a new proposal to combine physical health and mental health under Medicare and Medicaid. They're reworking the whole RSN dynamic. And I suspect that there's some reluctance, I think there should be some reluctance on the part of elected officials to uh, launch into a particular program until we see where things are going with the state. I understand the urgency and the time is of the essence, <clears throat> but I don't want us to, to uh, go build a facility and find out that it contradicts what the state is doing or, or disables us from participating in, in what the state is doing. Fortunately, I think we're real close to seeing how that pans out like in the next six months or so. Um, I have met with Mr. Oliver several times. Uh, last time was in his office where he uh, told me he had a presentation that was going to solve all of our problems. And with due respect to Mr. Oliver, it was uh, long on rhetoric, short on details, and absent funding. So if uh, we were to entertain having a workshop of any kind, <clears throat> uh, if we're going to expend resources, people's time, I would ask that it be uh, concise, yes. that it be uh, reasonably thorough, and that it address uh, the yes. need, the if proposal, the need, the proposal, and the funding. And rather than you want here, form let, me, let me finish, please. Um, rather than doing it in here in this environment, <clears throat> uh, I will volunteer or I'll defer to one of the other commissioners if they want to to go and pre-hear this and provide feedback uh, so that we don't come in and have a, a lengthy discussion that turns into uh, hopefully a, not a debate, but turns into a, uh, well, just a fractious dialogue. In other words, there's a lot of different people who have different views on this, and this isn't the vehicle to do that. So um, anybody want to go tackle this? Not I. I don't blame you. <laughs> I'll offer it to Mr. Miller, and if he doesn't want to do it, I'll, I'll be happy to go sit down with Mr. Oliver, hear his presentation, provide feedback, and then make a recommendation to, to the board as to whether or not I think we ought to workshop it. I can, uh, I can do you I want to do it? I don't have a problem. I know Bob very well. Um, I do have a problem with where the finance is going to come from. I think I know where he says, but it would be good to see if he's got some new FET findings, uh, because I think what I know is from Benton County, and it probably isn't going to work, because that's not our jurisdiction. And, we can't okay. know that. But well, it sounds like Commissioner Miller has volunteered, so why don't, yeah, you two, yeah. why don't you two get together outside the meeting, and thanks for joining us. And the one, one last thing I'd like to be to inform you, gentlemen, is 1985 through 1987, I was on the board of directors of the Clinica, the WebEx Plaza, mm -hmm. and I'm the man that uh, was the chairman of the Budget and Finance Review for them, and that was for the dental and for the mental health wings with the WebEx Plaza. And, that you, and I represented the Tri-City area at the NACHC health conferences and conventions in Seattle and Texas and in Acapulco. Mm -hmm. And I would love for you to come on if you have any type of a seat for somebody that has rehabilitation that is disabled. I fall in the spectrum of autism and I think outside the box. My, my thinking is a little bit different. That look at it and shine a different light on things. Okay. Yeah, thank you, gentlemen, for your time this morning, and God bless. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else that would like to meet with the board this morning? Okay. Say no. Move on to office business. Payroll, warrants, and consent. We have uh, three expenditure or two expenditures and one salary clearing in front of us this morning the first one being will we authorize the uh, make a motion to authorize the payment that was signed by Commissioner Peck last week and we didn't have a meeting and that bottom line is two hundred nine thousand one hundred nine dollars and one cent yeah we'll second the motion Okay, we have a motion and a second for approval of fund expenditures, noting these are the ones that I signed last week with the authority granted by the board the previous week. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, those are approved. Second fund expenditure uh, miscellaneous looks to be about a dozen of them. Uh, 
their fund, county roads, uh, track operations, etc., four hundred and fifty-four thousand eight hundred and sixty-four dollars and forty-six cents. And Keith has looked at them. Mr. Beaton signed off, and Rosa. Yeah, I will second the motion. Okay, motion is second for approval of fund expenditures as read in the record. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Third and final, I move for approval of salary clearing payroll and emergency management payroll. The bottom line of those two items is $984,635.18. And again, Mr. Beaton and Royal uh, has signed off. Okay, and I will second the motion. Okay, motion and second for approval of salary clearing and emergency management payroll as presented. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That is approved, as was the immediately previous one. I forgot to say it's approved. It's important in case the recording doesn't pick up all the votes. So those have all been approved. Um, consent agenda. We have 13 items today. Anybody wish to pull any of these for separate discussion? Let me take a second here. Let's just take a review on these. Okay. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you and I previously, uh, outside this meeting, had a little bit of a discussion about... Uh, Number six, which involves Molina Healthcare, we're going to try and have Mr. Sullivan here. Yes, I, I did speak to Mr. Sullivan. He actually on vacation this week, but I spoke to him on the phone and I got some clarification. Uh, okay. Before. So I'll go ahead and leave that on the consent and look forward to a discussion on that. Okay. Let me see. You're going to inquire as to whether or not we had any negative feedback on number nine, which is the Mud Dog Fit events. Anybody aware of any issues or concerns with that? No, I deferred with the folks at Public Works and they said they not had any been, been smooth? Okay, great. Um, not hearing anyone wanting to uh, pull any items. Entertain a motion for approval as presented. I yeah, will move that we approve uh, consent agenda items 1 through 13 with discussion on number 6. Okay. Second. Okay. Motion second for approval of consent agenda as presented with discussion. Uh, Commissioner Miller. Okay. I think that was the one you brought up, and, and uh, Keith was going to talk to us a little bit about that. Yes. As I said, uh, I was able to speak with Mr. Sullivan regarding this particular uh, MOU between uh, the Department of Human Services and Molina Healthcare. Uh, Molina Healthcare is one of four uh, MCOs that have been contracted through the state to uh, provide services in our region. And uh, this uh, particular MOU was initiated at, at Molina's request um, so that in the event that they served constituents uh, who had multiple avenues of service between perhaps and not only medical care but homelessness or other kinds of issues, they would be at liberty to discuss those uh, situations with our Department of Human Services staff and uh, make sure that they were able to meet all of the uh, needs of the individual who was seeking services. Uh, for example, if someone's hospitalized and the only reason for their hospitalization is that they're homeless, uh, Molina would be able to, rather than keep them in the hospital, be able to refer them to human services for special housing. Uh, and you can look at the program right now. Molina has requested this MOU so that they can just work together more closely with, um, with our Department of Human Services. Uh, this is not in any way going to affect the overall changes that are being made to the uh, NCOs as it relates to the state initiative for 2020. Uh, there is a provision within this MOU that if either party wants to change it to 30 days, that they could notify the other party that they're going to discontinue the, the service. So it's fairly low risk in that regard. Um, but it was, as I said, kind of done at Molina's request to uh, get some of their records to have it in place. Um, if you have technical questions and you decide you don't want to move forward this today, uh, Mr. Sullivan will be back in town next week and we'll defer until then. But, uh, based on the information that I have, uh, 
accomplishment they have with Kyle. I think I can recommend that we go ahead and go with this. Anybody have any questions on six? No. Okay. Just uh, real quick, Keith. Um, did you get the impression that under the state's 2020 consolidation that we would be working with a single MCO or that we might have multiple MCO qualified entities out there? Or we, I, I've always been under the understanding we have a single MCO uh, for our I do, provider. I do believe that that's my understanding as well. This is yeah. mentioned consolidated. And no one's expressed any concerns about us creating a relationship yeah. with an MCO that might taint the selection process going forward. That's correct. Okay. The, the actual contract for their services was selected by the state. <clears throat> okay. I'm not entirely comfortable with what I'm seeing, but I have long said that I look for three things in these contracts. I mean, I read them, but I look for three things. Do you have eligible parties? What is their consideration as qualifying? And especially, what's the exit strategy? And this one, as you point out, has a 30-day termination for convenience for any reason by any party. And so I'm willing to take the risk on that basis. But there are things about this that, that feel just just a skosh off. But it may just be my lack of awareness or understanding. So we'll move on. Um, number, I'm sorry, do you have something else? No, I'm okay. just saying we have to schedule some time to file to watch that. That would help you. I, I don't know. It, it, it may be a, a learning deficit on my part when it comes to this issue. <laughs> so number nine that uh, we've already covered. Uh, there's not been any negative feedback on that. And uh, we received a letter recently on that I think relates indirectly to item 12, which is a Homeland Security 2017 professional services contract. And I don't have any questions, don't need to uh, uh, go into it, but I do uh, want to offer if Sheriff Raymond had anything he wanted to say on, on this issue. Uh, if there's an opportunity, but certainly not a requirement. Okay. All right. With that, I think we've covered all the discussion. Any other comments on the consent? Okay. We've got a motion second for approval. The discussion is done. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Consent is approved. Okay, administration office business. Keith, let me go back to you. I think that uh, completes my information on well, the regular agenda today. Okay. I'm going to look to Jen. We don't have any need for an executive session today. Okay. Okay. And let's see. Uh, Back to public comment. Not seeing any members of the public. Anybody else want to comment? Okay. Any need for executive session? You said no. Any other comments from any of the commissioners? Okay. Hearing none, we're adjourned.